streaming with registrealestate.com. So I have a property here. I listed um, December 3rd, 2020, which is funny. And um, within one day, we have several offers. Actually, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offers. Oh, nine offers total. So we have a total of nine offers on this property. And the seller it said, uh, stop sending me offers. <laughs> so normally what happens in this case, um, when we have this many offers within one, day we ask for highest and best we set a deadline usually within 24 hours or 48 hours to give everybody an opportunity to send their highest and best offer but in this case the seller is like I don't want to go through that I'm just gonna pick one of the best offers that was submitted right so um, what I have to do in this case is come in and I will create an offer spreadsheet. So this makes it a lot easier for the seller to decide without looking at all the details of the purchase agreement. We will get to the details, but just for right now, sometimes it can be complicated because not every agent is using like a standard form. So there's just main points of a contract of an offer that we want to focus on so we want to know okay of course the buyer's name and agent name so we can identify which offer is which then we want to look at the deposit amount offer amount I'm going to give my seller an estimated net based on the offer amount and if there's any concessions so I'm going to fill this in of course the terms this is a cash offer is it conventional if it's FHA? Um, do they want a private inspection? If so, how many days? So are they going to have their inspection within three days, within five days, seven days, etc.? cetera? Um, is, what else is it that they, they're asking for? So appliances and things of that nature. So these are the main points of an offer. My seller can just strictly, uh, simply, I'm sorry, simply look here at the net and start eliminating offers based on the highest um, offer amount then we'll look at the other detail who has the stronger deposit so maybe somebody has ten thousand on deposit maybe somebody has two thousand on deposit right so we'll determine from there maybe someone's given 30 days occupancy right um, maybe someone is given 30 days free occupancy, right? So um, maybe the net to seller is going to be 132.5 or 07 or whatever the case may be. So we can simply just go through and compare offers, pick the top two, compare those, or maybe pick the top three because now we have a total, I think I counted nine offers here on this property and the seller just says no more now sometimes we'll just do like I said highest and best but what's gonna happen if we do that because we have let's say we put a deadline in today is December 5th um, let's say we put a deadline in for Monday December 7th we probably would end up with maybe I would say on a property like this maybe 17 or 18 offers uh, that's probably going to confuse the seller and a lot of offers are going to end up being pretty similar. So the seller has said, that's enough. Don't send me any more offers. I don't want to show the property no more. We got what we wanted plus um, a little bit more. So let's go ahead and move forward with the offer. Um, you know, I know some of the agents, I know some of the loan reps, they're all good. Looks like they can all perform and actually get to closing. That is one of the deciding factors. Um, every time I receive an offer, I'm reaching out to the agent and the loan rep. Like, hey, we got a good offer, but can you make it to closing? Because some buyers are out here submitting offers, but they don't have all the uh, requirements and credentials. To get it clear to close and some loan reps will give you a pre-qual letter or 
an approval letter that's not worth the paper it's written on. So this is Reginald Perryman with Reggie'sRealEstate.com just talking to you about multiple offers because in March of 2020, people were telling me that the market was going to crash before the end of the year. And here I am still dealing with multiple offers on one home. It's not enough inventory. People get out there and list some properties. Let's put some homes on the market so that we can get some of these buyers into the property and get the real estate market really circulating like it should.